a thing called, another thing I didn't realize with head and neck cancer is that it's not just about just seeing one person. There's a whole team of people there who really take great care of you. And, um, and I hadn't just appreciated how complex the logistics is of even just the preparation to get you ready before you even start your treatment. Um, you know, you see someone to get your special mask fitted, especially for you, so you don't move around with the radiation treatment. You get kidney tests taken, you get blood tests taken. Um, uh, you get, you see a dentist to see whether you need to have any teeth out. Um, and for that, I'm eternally grateful to my dentist for making sure I've had brilliant hy oral hygiene for the last 10 years. So I knew I need to, didn't have any teeth taken out, which I think is actually quite unusual for someone my age is about to have radiation therapy because there's usually some kind of like cavity that they need to get rid of before they actually start the radiation treatment. Um, yes, yeah, so there's all that kind of sort of going on. Um, and then you also meet a speech therapist to sort of give you exercises to do. Um, which you think these are a bit silly to do, first of all. And then as your treatment progresses, it becomes really, really clear that you need to keep on learning how to swallow and to re-swallow once treatment ends. And so we're doing these exercises every, every day from the speech therapist, they were uh, hugely important. And then you also have a team of nutritionists as well. Um, and, and again, they really give you, you know, brilliant advice for you know, encouraging you to you know what types of food to eat and also to encourage you to um, take these kind of, sort of protein shakes when, when you're not actually not able to eat because of the, the ulcers that develop in your mouth through the radiation uh, at, at, at treatment. Um, and, and, and actually, I find the nutrition is really good because I had a gastrostomy, which is like a, a tube that went into my belly, but then I could feed myself through liquid food. Um, and I kind of swore at first I would, I would need to use this, um, but they were really good in convincing me that this is really the best thing to happen because um, sure enough, once the treatment became too severe, then I had to use the, 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 the peg that I had. And also for drinking water as well, I couldn't drink, so I put that in through the tube as well. And that really meant that I, I lost, I mean, I, you know, everyone loses a bit of weight, but I think I lost a lot less weight by having the tube fitted and them encouraging me to use it all the time and to keep it clean and all this kind of stuff. And you have nurses who come around to check it to keep it clean as well. And so all that team are just absolutely brilliant. And so all these things are going on. You, you, you can even possibly imagine what's happening. But then once you start, you just, you just, you just kind of uh, 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 go with it.